What is this? What is that? I got one question for you. What are your thoughts on these freaky, funky, bulbous, leafy friends? Did you just bring home a pokey protuberance of your very own? Look, if you're wondering how to take care of your grafted coral cactus, then sit down and listen up, because I've had lots of practice. Hey there, I'm Smith Kingston, houseplant guru extraordinaire. Joining us today, we have Toby McSmuter, Yabantan Melon, and the strikingly attractive Lady Space Cowgirl. Daryl, what? All right. All right. All right. Anyway, these freaky pokey bulbous bitches here in front of me are known by many names. Some examples of their common names include candelabra plant, crested elkhorn, and my personal favorite, Frankenstein cactus. Now, I'm not positive, but I'm pretty f***ing sure that the reason they were given the nickname Frankenstein is because of the way that these beautiful yet highly unusual plants were grafted together. Each of these three plants is actually a combination of two different species of plant that have been fused together in a form of freaky botanical surgery in much the same way that Dr. Frankenstein created his monster by sewing together a bunch of bits of dead flesh from different people's freshly buried bodies and then somehow reanimating it all in order to make his person slash monster. For now though, we're not gonna get into that since this is a video about taking care of house plants and not making your very own, you know. Yeah, that. So yeah, because of, you know, all the grafting, naming these scientifically is a little bit more difficult, but it can be done. Now, the top parts of each of these grafted coral cacti look a little different from one another as far as shape and color are concerned because of their different variegations, but they all belong to the same species. Known by the common name of crested coral cactus and by the scientific name, of Euphorbia lactea. The bottom bits of these two funky friends is known commonly as holy milk hedge and scientifically as Euphorbia neriifolia. And the bottom part of this one here is known commonly as dragon fruit cactus and scientifically as Hylocereus undatus. I've named this one Gab Monster and I gotta say, I've had this sweet salty sister of a succulent for a long time and she is one of my absolute favorite houseplants. Some friends of mine found her at a farmer's market in Irvine, California all the way back in 2016 and she's been with me ever since. These two I found quite a bit more recently and I have yet to officially name them, but I'm open to suggestions. So if you want to take a crack at naming one of these two beautifully bulbous bitches, then leave me a comment and if the name fits, Listen, I'm probably going to refer to these as grafted coral cactus all throughout this video, just because that's a pretty widely accepted common name for these freaky funky Frankensteins. But I want to clarify real quick that as far as their scientific classification is concerned, these are succulents, but not cacti. While every cactus is a succulent, not every succulent is a cactus. Cacti have what are called aerials from which their fuzz and spines usually grow. Euphorbia lactea do have spines, but their spines don't grow from aerials, and for that reason, they are technically not a cactus. Anyway, enough about naming and classification. Let's talk about how to keep these bulbous bitches happy. Grafted coral cacti are succulents, and they need to be watered as such. This means giving the soil in their containers a good chance to dry out in between each watering. The roots that extend from the bases of both holy milk hedge and dragon fruit plants are highly susceptible to root rot, fungal infections, pests, and lots of other complications that can be easily avoided as long as you water your Frankenstein plant correctly. In order to make sure the soil in your plant's container has dried out sufficiently, it's a good idea to, before watering, 
Check for moisture by sticking a finger about an inch down into the soil, or by feeling the soil through the drainage hole of your plant's container. Because these are grafted, you don't want to let the soil in their containers stay dry for too long. But even so, if you're in any doubt as to whether or not your plant is ready to be watered, it's better to wait than to risk it. You're way more likely to kill your Frankenstein by overwatering it than by letting it dry out. When it comes to choosing a container for these funky Frankensteins, the most important thing is to pot them into a container with a drainage hole. As far as container size is concerned, it is possible for these to become root bound, but this is pretty rare and it takes years. Any container above around four inches that doesn't dwarf your plant should be fine. When it comes to choosing a soil type for your grafted coral cactus, you definitely want to use a cactus mix or some other quick draining type of soil. This, in addition to watering your plant correctly and keeping it in a draining container, will protect your plant from root rot and all the other complications we talked about earlier. These freaky Frankensteins prefer lots of indirect sunlight and can even handle two to three hours of direct sunlight every day, as long as the direct sunlight is absorbed early and or late in the day when the sun is low in the sky and the majority of its ultraviolet radiation is being filtered by the Earth's atmosphere. Too much direct sunlight will cause them to get little burns like the ones found here. They will survive with a lot less sunlight than this though. Gab Monster, for example, spent a little over a year just south of a west-facing window where she received only a low level of indirect sunlight. She didn't grow much during that time though, and since I've moved her to a place with tons of artificial light, she's been way less salty and bitchy towards all the other succulents, and she's put on lots of new growth. These leafy friends don't particularly need fertilizer, but if you're looking for lots of growth, then they can be fertilized in spring and summer during their growing season, but never in fall or winter. This is the fertilizer that I use. It's geared towards succulents, but any well-balanced fertilizer should do the trick. I fertilize these by giving the soil in their containers one shot directly after having watered them once in mid-spring and then again early in summer. But some say to fertilize them as often as once every two weeks during the growing season. Grafted coral cacti prefer to be kept in temperatures between 60 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. They will survive in temperatures slightly lower or higher than the ones found in this range, but they won't be too happy about it. Also, if they freeze, they will probably die. If you're careful to follow the instructions given thus far in the video, it is highly unlikely that your plant will ever battle any kind of a fungal infection. But, in the event that your freaky funky Frankenstein faces a fungal foe, then surgery may be your only option. I've heard tales of people cutting off fungally infected frostbitten flesh in order to successfully save their salty succulent friend. And I've also heard of people chopping off their plant's base just above the surface of the soil and then rooting it into fresh potting soil in order to save their plants from a bad case of root rot after having overwatered their grafted coral cactus. This second method is really only an option early in your plant's growing season and it's better to avoid either of these situations by watering your plant correctly and keeping it at the right temperature. Hey, real quick, I realized that multiple times over the course of this video I've referred to these bulbous leafy friends as being salty and I feel the need to make a clarification. When I say salty, I mean it in the sense of these plants appearance, personality, attitude, and the general vibes that these bulbous beauties tend to exude. I don't mean salty as in taste or flavor. Let me be very clear. Do not eat these plants. They are toxic. If ever these bulbous beauties are cut or cracked, they will, like most succulents, secrete what is called a latex. In the case of the coral cactus, this latex is milky white and very poisonous. If eaten, it will cause nausea and vomiting. If it gets in your eyes, it will cause severe irritation and even temporary blindness. Even skin exposure can cause dermatitis. So yeah, don't do any of that sh**. I don't know, but it must have been a pretty shitty day. These freaky friends may need to, from time to time, 
be defended against certain pests, such as mealybugs and scale. The latex that we talked about earlier does scare away most types of bugs, but it is still a good idea to practice constant vigilance and check for signs of pests every time you water your plant. And hey, in the event that you do find yourself in a melee with mealybugs or a scuffle with scale, then check out this video where I outline how to make and use an alcohol dish soap solution that is highly effective against both of these <laughs> as well as lots of other pests. Hey, listen, do you like bad graffiti, worse jokes, wacky macrame, and pretty good advice about how to take care of your houseplants? Well then f***ing subscribe! Thanks Lady Space Cowgirl. That's right, click that notification bell too so you never miss a new video.